Good evening, everyone. On a uh, wonderful June evening, I am Margaret Smith. I'm the chair of the Town of Los Gatos Planning Commission, and I am calling to order the meeting of Wednesday, June 11th, 2014. Mr. Paulson, can you call the roll, please? Commissioner Erickson? Here. Commissioner Sayok? Here. Commissioner Badami? Here. Commissioner O'Donnell? Here. Commissioner Birch? Here. Chair Smith? Here. And Commissioner O'Donnell, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Right after the Pledge of Allegiance, I always like to remind everyone that part of the democratic process is what you're doing this evening in being here. And we strongly encourage you to participate uh, in our democratic process and to speak to the Planning Commission about issues that may be of concern to you. We give you three opportunities to address the Planning Commission. One opportunity would be in writing about an agenda item, and you can submit that ahead of the meetings to a member of the staff. Another way would be at the meeting, if there is an issue that you want to bring to the attention of the Planning Commission, but it is not on the agenda, you may speak to us for up to three minutes. And then the third way is to speak um, for up to three minutes on an item that is agendized. So we encourage you to fill out these cards. They're in the back of the seats. Anyone who is going to speak tonight does need to complete a card and submit it to the staff to my right. Um, in addition, just to give you um, some information, please uh, put your cell phones on silence. And we commissioners have to shut off our cell phones because they actually interfere with the technology up here. But we do ask you to silence your cell phones. Uh, if you are going to speak this evening when you approach the podium, if you could please pull the microphone down so that uh, you're speaking directly into it. Uh, we're going to ask for your name and address so that you identify yourself to the commission. And uh, with that, let's see. Um, do we have uh, minutes from May 21st, Mr. Paulson? We do not, do not, not this evening. All right, thank you. And are there any written communications? There is a desk item for item number one. All right, and commissioners, if you've had an opportunity to read the uh, desk item, everyone by show of hands, thank you. Are there any requested continuances? There are not. All right, uh, in addition to their role as a planning commissioner, the commissioners also sit on subcommittees that meet in between our uh, scheduled meetings on the second and fourth Wednesdays. Are there reports from any commissioners on a subcommittee? Uh, no reports. And now we have what I call the verbal communication opportunity for anyone in the audience who has an item that they would like to speak on that is not on the agenda. I do not have any cards, but don't be shy. If there's something on your mind you want to bring to our attention, we'll listen. Seeing none, is there anything on the consent calendar, Mr. Paulson? I don't see any items. There is not. All right. So now we're going to move to the public hearing portion of our agenda, and I'm going to call agenda item one. Agenda item one is the architecture and site application S13092, which is requesting approval to demolish an existing single family residence and to construct a new single family residence at 16330 Shannon Road. By a show of hands, may I see the commissioners who visited the property? Are there any disclosures at this time? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Mosley, I understand you'll give us the report this evening. Yes, thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Just a reminder, you do have a desk item on this, as well as staff did receive one additional email late this afternoon in support of the proposed project that uh, was after our ability to include it in your desk item. <clears throat> the subject property is located one lot to the east of the southeast corner of Shannon Road and Shady View Lane. The property was annexed into the town in October of last year, and all contiguous properties to the east, west, and south of the site remain under the jurisdiction of Santa Clara County, while the properties across Shannon Road are located within the town. The applicant is proposing to demolish an existing one-story house and to construct a new 
3,373 square foot two-story residence with a 541 square foot attached garage. The size of the proposed residence has a similar FAR in square footage as those in the immediate neighborhood and the proposed project complies with the maximum height, setbacks, and coverage for the zone. While the applicant has reduced the overall height of the residence from 30 feet to 29 feet and removed <coughs> excuse me, the second floor mass over the garage, the residence would still be significantly taller than the immediately adjacent homes and most likely the tallest in the immediate neighborhood. While staff believes a two-story residence may be appropriate for this property, the height and massing should be carefully considered in relation to the neighboring residences. As such, the application was forwarded to the Planning Commission for consideration. The plans were reviewed by the town's consulting architect twice. The first submittal required some refinement to the material choices and a recommendation that the residence be stepped down over the garage to provide a better transition to the lower profile residence to the west and refinement to the bathroom extension over the west side of the second floor over the garage. The plans were revised to address the concerns provided by the consultant and no further changes were recommended upon the second review by the consultant. Based on the massing difference of the proposed residence with that of the immediately adjacent homes, staff recommends denial of the architecture and site application. However, if the Planning Commission finds merit with the proposal, the Commission could approve the application subject to the attached conditions and findings provided in the report or approve the application with modified conditions or additionally provide direction to the applicant and continue the application to a date certain for further consideration. This completes staff's report. We are here if you have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. Are there any questions of Ms. Mosley? Uh, I do just have one question if you know the answer to it. Um, going down the side street, which would still be considered the immediate neighborhood, there are a number of two-story homes and I'm just wondering where the county line stops and this home in other words, are those Los Gatos homes or County of Santa Clara homes that have been built? Most of Shady View is within the county. If you look at Exhibit 1, okay. um, it should demark which ones are in the county and which ones are in the town. It's also on page 4 of your report. There you go. Okay. All right. That's a point of reference. Thank you very much. All right, now I'm going to open the public portion of the uh, public hearing, and we are going to call the applicant uh, to the podium. And I'm not sure um, who that's going to be, but let me tell you that, first of all, you will have five minutes to address the commission, and uh, then we're going to hear from other speakers, and you can have a seat and think about anything maybe you want to add that you might have forgotten or respond to uh, one of the other speakers. So we have um, quite a few cards. So if the two of you are going to speak together, maybe you can both identify yourselves and you can tell me your, who you are and then I'll pull the right card. Okay. Um, good evening. My name is Matt Curry and I'm the applicant. Michael Davis, uh, 17705 Hale Avenue. I'm the designer of the home. Okay, so I have it. So go ahead, gentlemen, and make your presentation. When the light turns yellow, you know that you're down to 30 seconds. Great. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Matt Curry. My wife, Carrie, and I own and have lived at the two-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath home at 16330 Shannon Road since November of 2010. We have three school-aged children. Our children all attend Los Gatos schools. We love our neighborhood, our neighbors in the town of Los Gatos. Our proposed home complies with the town's height, setback, and structure coverage limitations and all applicable codes. Staff's report states that the FAR and square footage of our new home are within the range of our immediate neighborhood. The zoning permits two-story residences. We are not requesting, nor do we require any variances. We are not developers. Our home was designed to harmonize and blend with the scale and rhythm of our neighborhood and is in keeping with the style of homes in the town. Um, the vision statement of Los Gatos' latest general plan states input from surrounding residents and property owners is a major consideration during any development review process. Recognizing the importance the town places on neighborhood endorsement of new projects, we prioritize the, the interests of our neighbors during our design process. Our immediate neighbors all endorse our home and twice have signed letters of support confirming that we have considered their privacy and, and our home will comfortably fit with and enhance our neighborhood. 
As you likely know, the residential design guidelines emphasize neighborhood compatibility with the recognition that change is inevitable, may be an improvement to the neighborhood, and may be desired by the neighborhood. Our neighborhood desires the changes we make and believe it is compatible with and will enhance our neighborhood. 30% of the homes in our immediate neighborhood, as defined by staff, are two stories. The residential design, design guidelines provide that there are several factors in determining an immediate neighborhood when the diagram in section 1.6 might not be applicable. Also, several two-story homes overlook our side and rear yards. <clears throat> Using the common sense approach the residential design guidelines recommend in viewing the attached neighborhood map, the two-story homes are, are noted in yellow, one can reasonably conclude that two-story homes are prevalent in our neighborhood and our home is compatible with our surrounding neighborhood. In designing our family home, we considered a variety of important factors. Critical among these was maximizing the private, safe, and quiet outdoor living space for our school-aged children. Here's a picture of the front of our home on a typical weekend. As the town is aware, Shannon Road is a heavily trafficked town artery with a 30 mile an hour speed limit. Due to this existing condition in the parking lot across the street, we desired to have our outdoor family space in the rear of our home for the safety and privacy of our family. Recently, the town's consulting architect concluded that we addressed his prior recommendations and have a well-designed home that is sensitive to our neighbors. We made a conscious effort to maintain the privacy of our adjacent neighbors with increased second level side setbacks and minimized our second level wherever possible. Our family home was designed with sensitivity to our immediate neighbors and blends with the style and scale of the neighborhood and the town. We respectfully request that the Planning Commission approve our home plans as proposed. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration of our family home. Um, now I'm going to have our architect Mike talk a little bit more about the design. Michael Davis, again the designer of the home. Uh, real quick, some points here. The home that you see before you tonight has gone through two different redesigns. One was with staff suggesting that we lower the height, also have a continuous des a contiguous design with windows, with signing, which we did uh, at original submittal. Then we went to the pure architect, and we were shocked to learn that the pure architect said, redesign it. And I was shocked, whatnot. We went back and we did redesign the home, as you see before you today, matching exactly what he called out for. What he suggests and what we've accomplished now is a two-story element that's less than 50% of that lot width do it a 20% ease or 20 foot easement on the left side of the lot and by moving and removing that second level massing a 23 foot setback on the right side of the lot. So our second story portion of this home again less than 50% of the lot width right in the center of the home and the center of the lot. We have large oak trees to the right, large redwood trees to the back, large eucalyptus trees to the left side that really just nestle this house into this particular site. We do have an increased front setback also. Right now we're two foot away from the property line if you all went out there. And uh, we've increased that to 35 feet to the house uh, front wall. We have a porch that comes out to the front to break up some of that second level look with the exterior porch and seeing the neighborhood uh, walk by. Shannon Road really, as you drive up and down, is, is a, a street in transition where we have two stories, different design concepts there. We want to blend with that, and we've gone with a farmhouse style throughout that. Um, I'm here for questions, I guess. All right, thank you. If you can both stay there, let's see if we have any questions. Any questions of the applicant? Commissioner O'Donnell. Would you remind me what the setback is from the street to the front of the house proposed? From the property line, it's a 25-foot setback that we have to have. We're at 35 foot from the property line, which is another eight feet to the actual street and that little fence that's out there. So the property line is inboard of the street? Inboard of the street, yes, sir. Thank you. Edge of the street. Uh, Mr. Davis, maybe you can walk me through um, what the ideas are, or Mr. Curry, either one, for the, um, as I was parked across the street today thinking about this in terms of the um, comments on mass, what your landscaping plan is when it matures? I mean, what's, what's the vision in the front of the house? Uh, that's the vision right there. So we have some replacement trees that are required. So we're going to plant those in the front left of the uh, home, as you see on the landscape plan behind you and then trees across the front. We have a low three-foot fence with rail 
across the front of the house too with some hedging behind that. So, you know, a, br a break across the front and then larger trees on the left and right. We do have that large oak that is actually on the neighbor's property to the west side that we don't want to put any trees or anything underneath that oak tree. So it'll be well screened there. There is a um, comment to put screening trees along the left and right side property lines. All right, and my, um, I wondered what you thought about it, um, during the winter time when the cars are pulling out of the parking lot from Blossom Hill Park with their lights on shining into the front of the house. It just was a comment that I thought today the, the how you plan level rooms are an office in like a living space a living room whereas the all of our family activities are to the backyard mm -hmm. so in terms of evening that wouldn't be a, a distraction all the children's bedrooms up in front that face the front are well above the beams of the lights all right thank, thank you. you any other questions commissioners yes commissioner sayak mr davis you mentioned that um, you actually did two designs one th through staff review and the one through consulting architect review. Yes, um, could you just talk about what changed between the staff review and the consulting architect Certainly, review? Certainly, thank you. So our vision as we look at the eclectic mix along Shannon Road, my clients are from Wisconsin area, so we want that farmhouse look, but with a cutting edge, uh, more of a contemporary style. So the right side of the home where you see the garage was all stuck on very cleaned line and then the main body of the home in a two-story portion had the lap siding, more of that eastern farmhouse look. Uh, right away, staff said, well, that's not going to fly with the pure architect, maybe not the commission either, so she wanted a more contiguous design, also with the windows. We had, again, more of a contemporary look, same geometry, but different grid patterns on some of those windows at the farmhouse to the contemporary. In the back of the uh, house at that time, we also had a glass garage door that could play off of the rear yard area. So again, very contemporary on that single story portion across the right. As uh, staff mentioned earlier, we did have second level above the garage space. Our master bath was over that space. We took out um, that whole area based on the first uh, peer review from the architect. We took out that whole second level, redesigned the whole second level area, put some more square footage down below at the first floor, giving up some yard space. And then that's what you see before you. Now, uh, the staff did request that we lower the roof or the roof height. We did drop it down to one foot below the maximum height allowed. All right, uh, seeing no other questions, um, the two of you can just have a seat and then just know that you'll have three minutes to either comment on something you might have forgotten to mention or comment on something else that uh, another speaker has said. Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, make an attempt at this last name and um, so please correct me when you come to the podium. Bob and is it Boshert? Here we go. I'm Bob Boschert. I live directly next door to them at 16310 Shannon. And uh, I've seen the drawings, saw the poles, all that red stuff up in the air. House looks pretty much like everything else in the neighborhood, and I have no objection. It's not a problem for me. Thank you, sir. Don't leave the podium. So let me ask you, so you're to the left of them, or if you're as facing, you face them? I'm on the left. You're on the left. Yeah. And um, it, all right, that, that's all I wanted to know was you're you're the one-story home on the left yes all right thank you any questions for mr. Boschert? seeing none you can have a seat sir thank you for your comments our next speaker will be Mike Ann and then if Gregory Pache can uh, be prepared to speak as well thank you mr. on yes um, hello members of the Planning Commission my name is Mike on um, I live at 16396 East La Chiquita Avenue um, I use uh, Shannon Road as an artery every day, you know, going past their house or going the other direction. Um, I'm here to voice my opinion for the approval of the uh, two-story construction at 1633 Shannon Road. Um, when taking these things into consideration that um, along Shannon Road from Los Gatos Boulevard to Short Road, there's uh, 65 residences, and out of the 65 residences that have a presence on Shannon Road, 23 of them are 
two-story homes. So basically 35 percent. Um, also, I've noticed that there was um, another single-story home on Shannon Road at 16560 that was actually approved for a, a subdivision and two two-story uh, homes at that site. And also at uh, on Short Road, I think it was at 16151141 that there's actually another two-story home that's, that's going up that I noticed as well. Um, I think the uh, two-story design of the farmhouse is an overall aesthetic improvement over the existing structures. Um, as well as you know, congruent with the, the overall neighborhood feel. Um, so as well as there's no view obstructions because I think across the street from them is, is the park. So they're not obstructing anybody's view of the, of the mountains or the hills. So I think overall, when you take these facts into consideration that I would urge uh, Planning Commission to approve the uh, project at 1633 Shannon Road as is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahn. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you, sir. You can have a seat. Gregory, and please correct your last name. I'm sure I didn't do it correctly. Posh. Posh, thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Gregory Posh. I live at 16468 Camellia Terrace in Los Gatos. Um, I've lived there since the late 90s, raised my kids in the town, and uh, we use the park quite a bit. The playground, playing baseball, softball, and um, we like this town very much. And the um, the home proposed right now, I think, would be uh, a benefit and a very much improvement for that area. Um, this is a family that uh, wants to be here and is doing everything they can to build a beautiful home in our beautiful town. And uh, I think it's um, a great, um, it's a great project. Um, I think it conforms to the neighborhood and uh, I would encourage the town to, and the planning commission to approve this project. So thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Carrie Curry. Okay. Uh, Jim Fowler. And right behind him is going to be Eric Morley, just so that you know how we're lining up here. Hi. Good evening. My name is Jim Fowler. I live in the area. I travel uh, on Shannon Road quite a bit. Um, what we have here is a young family who's trying to create a home that's attractive, modern, and safe. It replaces a non-conforming home that is not family friendly. The new home complies in all respects with all city codes. The um, consulting architect had some concerns with the original designs. The Currys addressed each and every one of those concerns. The consulting architect also notes that in a transitional neighborhood, homes like the existing homes are often replaced by larger modern conforming homes just like this one. The staff report also states that the new home is categorically exempt from CEQA. It complies with height, setback, FAR, on-site parking, building coverage limitations, and beyond mere compliance, the FAR and square footage of the new house is within the range of houses in the neighborhood. No significant trees are being removed, and the staff report states that a two-story house may be appropriate for this property. Nevertheless, the staff report recommends denial, and let me get this straight, based on the massing difference of the proposed residence with that of the immediately adjacent homes. First, this limits neighborhood compatibility to the homes on each side. It ignores the fact that the Curry's house and those homes are essentially surrounded by two-story homes. Second, even as an abstract proposition, this makes no sense. A neighborhood could never transition if every new home had to mimic the size and scale of the existing homes. 
And third, in the real world, the people most affected by this massive, in fact, support the project. They do not want the protection the planning staff is trying to impose on them. They understand the value to their property, to the neighborhood, and to the town of replacing a non-conforming home with a new, modern, attractive home. Now, I know you must get hard cases in front of you all the time. This is not one of them. The Currys have done everything right. It's a shame that the planning staff didn't feel empowered to come up with a positive recommendation. But you can correct that. You can approve this project and allow the Currys to build a family home while their kids are still young enough to enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Any questions? Seeing none, the next speaker, Eric Morley. And then behind him will be Nicolette Kelly. Evening, Mr. Morley. Evening, Chair. Uh, Eric Morley, 16322 Lilac Lane in Los Gatos. Um, just wanted to uh, say, I, uh, as many of you do use that park, I uh, have seen the story polls, and um, it's interesting. I, I think that uh, in, in most respects, the immediately adjacent homes are uh, incompatible with the neighborhood architecturally um, and also from a massing and scale perspective. I'm uh, here uh, supportive of this application from reading uh, the Curry's letter. Um, they uh, received direction from the town's architect to completely redesign their home, spent tens of thousands of dollars and months doing that to do exactly what the town's architect had requested. And in fact, uh, sh their architecture today mimics that. And um, I think it's important to reward applicants for reaching out early to their neighbors, deriving consensus, um, and also uh, complying with uh, exactly what's requested of them. And, and also I'd encourage the Planning Commission to, to use common sense here. I think when you, when you look at the neighborhood and you look at everything around, I think they've designed a wonderful home and um, I think it deserves your support uh, as proposed this evening. Thank you. Mr. Morley, no questions. Uh, Nicolette Kelly and then right behind her will be Mary Hammers. Hi, I'm Nicolette Kelly. I live at 224 Loma Alta Avenue. I am a longtime resident of Los Gatos and a 20-year veteran to the Los Gatos real estate market. I agree with everything that's been said so far in support of the project. I wrote it all out, but I'm not going to say that because I, Margaret, you, uh, Ms. Smith, you had asked about the county and the city and the different houses. And I just wanted to point out the street directly across on Del Carlo Court is Los Gatos uh, City. The house one door in is 104 Del Carlo, and I believe that's a two-story house. It's very tall, and I think it's 3,500 square feet, and there's two single-story homes next door to it. So I just wanted to make that point, and I hope that you guys will support this project as it's proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Whitney Halliday, and uh, we'll, are, are you Mary? I'm Mary. Yeah. Right, and then Whitney Halliday will follow you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. In full support of this project, to me, it just seems like a home run for our neighborhood. I live at 16230 Shannon Road, and it's just a few houses down from the Currys. And my house was built in 1866, so the precedent, it's a two-story farmhouse. So the precedent for farmhouses and two-story houses on Shannon Road was set quite a long time ago. Um, I think the Currys have worked so hard to make this a beautiful project for our neighborhood. I should also let you know that Mrs. Curry and I worked together on efforts to try to make Shannon Road safer for families and for everyone who uses it, the bikers, the walkers, the children at the park, the children going to and from schools. So this is a family that we want on Shannon Road, a family that enhances Los Gatos, and I would hate to see them forced into the position of leaving our wonderful street. So I encourage you to please approve their project and keep the Currys on Shannon Road. We need them, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Whitney Halliday, and then followed by, um, is it Jimmy Ann Wong? Hi. Hi, I'm Whitney Halliday.
Holiday, and thank you for this opportunity to speak. I um, want you to pull the microphone up to your, sure. uh, just lift it right up. It pushes right up. There okay. we go. Thank you. Hi, I'm Whitney Halliday, and want to thank you for this opportunity to speak. And want to um, echo what everybody here has said. We are highly in support of this project. We live on 16400 Hilo. Um, we are a, we live in a neighborhood very close to Shannon, and we frequent the park um, quite often with our children. Uh, we saw the story poles, and we looked carefully at the design and feel that this is a beautiful home that will fit very well into the neighborhood. Um, I, you mentioned massing a few times. Um, I personally don't, don't see that this, this house is any taller than any of the other two-story homes in the area. There are homes almost one or two houses down that are almost not if if not the same height higher it, it appears to me um it's a it's a gorgeous home and it i think it'll really beautify the neighborhood and um it'll be a very beautiful upgrade to to the neighborhood and and the street as well so um, i'm very in support of this project and really hope that your panel approves this project to proceed but thank you very much thank you the last name of Wong, yes. And your first name is? Hi, my name is Jimmy Ann Wong, and I um, live at 101 Milani Court, so just on the other side of 17. Um, I frequently drive up and down Shannon Road, and my four children have been coming to Blossom Hill Park over the last 14 years, and I just, I, I understand this process and, and um, I appreciate it. I, I really do truly look forward to hearing the approval of this amazing project. Um, it's just a wonderful chance to improve the quality of the neighborhood and it would be a shame if to let this opportunity slip away. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Then the last speaker, unless there's someone else who would like to come up with a card, Tamara, and is it Boner, not sure. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I live at 106 Costanzas Court um, in the town, and I wanted to just let you know that I pass regularly by the park. My kids both go to Blossom Hill. Um, I think it's a beautiful home that they're planning to build, and I think it would be a huge upgrade, and I don't think it's a anything larger than um, any of the other homes nearby or that it is larger than the lot allows for. So I encourage you to approve their property. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And um, that seems to be the end of the speaker cards. And so now we'd like to give the applicant up to three minutes to add any further comments. And um, so Mrs. Curry, you're going to speak, yes. Hi, and good evening. I'd like to start by thanking you all for the opportunity to speak with you about our home. I will try my best to keep this brief. I'm Carrie Curry, wife of Matthew, artist, and proud mother of three amazing children, Ava, Ethan, and Ruby. Years ago, uh, Matthew's courier brought us to Northern California. We wanted to leave the hustle and bustle of a big city behind us. We longed to raise and root our children in a small, safe town with excellent schools and a strong sense of community. Hence, we happily settled here in Los Gatos. Our youngest, Ruby, was even born here. Over the years, our children have flourished, and they have become active members of the community and have made lifelong friendships. Creating our home has been a process. We have worked as a family as a team for the past two years, designing a home that reflects our lifestyle, our values, and the rhythm of our family. In addition, our home has been thoughtfully designed to reflect the town's aesthetics and with respect to our, pri our neighbor's privacy. Ava, Ethan, and Ruby have played an active part in creating our home. With each small triumph and setback, Seen on their tiny faces, another opportunity to teach a life lesson arises. This creative process is more than just the end all result of a well-designed house, but it is the journey and the steps taken to achieve this goal. This journey to me 
is about relationships, connections, and community that are formed, about demonstrating respect, teamwork, and cooperation, about belonging to a community. We are not just designing a house, but, a, but are teaching our children invaluable life lessons. Through all the smiles and tears these past two years, we have demonstrated perseverance. You see, to me, this project is not a house, but it is our home. A home in which I will continue to teach and guide these amazing individuals who are my light, my essence, and my being. A safe and functional home that reflects my values, which are deeply, deeply rooted in love, commitment, and respect for my family, friends, and community. A home in which dreams are born, dreams are deferred, heartbreaks, heartaches, triumphs, and the not so easy life lessons will take place. A home where proms and graduations will come and go, first loves will happen, where life li milestones will be created. A home where Ava, Ethan, and Ruby will become incredible young adults who will one day leave our nest and will always be welcomed home with loving arms. A home for my precious family to continue our traditions, cherish our memories, and create new ones. A home where I will continue every day to honor, protect, and love my family with the most thankful heart. I respectfully request that you approve our plans to our family home as proposed without changes. Thank you very much for your thoughtful consideration tonight. Thank you. Mrs. Curry, stay right there. Any questions? Seeing none, go ahead and have a seat. Okay, I'm now going to close the public portion of the public hearing and ask the commissioners if they have any questions of staff, want to comment on the application, or want to introduce a motion for consideration by the commission. Commissioner Sayak. Okay, um, I'll start off with a question of staff first and then I can go ahead and um, share comments. The first question uh, to staff, there was an appeal that town council had reviewed on Shannon Road a couple blocks away and I know there was significant discussion about transition neighborhoods. Um, and in fact, a meeting ago, two weeks ago, we had the same discussion on transition. And the question that we had posed was, who decides and who defines a transitional neighborhood? Now with this specific neighborhood, did the council actually, when reviewing the Shannon appeal, describe this as a transitional neighborhood that we can now utilize? I don't recall exactly whether or not they use those terms. Um, the commission is free to interpret, make their own interpretation of whether or not they feel that this neighborhood or this portion of this neighborhood is in fact a transitional neighborhood. That's correct. I mean, they discussed the same issue that you're gonna be discussing, but they didn't make any motion and, and declare this a transition neighborhood. But they did discuss it just as I'm sure you will. Okay, so um, now having the legal definition, um, as I had mentioned, a meeting ago we had the same discussion on a neighborhood many, many blocks away. And um, I think what's unique about this neighborhood in this application is that oftentimes we have the county having larger homes and having an applicant want to to have a large home in keeping with that. And in this particular case, we have the opposite, where now it's the smaller homes on the county side, and we don't have the immediate neighborhood definition to guide us. Now, um, clearly, as in the staff report, it, it said that um, second story is, is um, allowable, um, the FAR, everything was in keeping, and it was just the mass. So I certainly understand the um, the staff recommendation of denial if you look at the staff report on paper it was um when you look at things on paper it gives you one dimension and clear the first time i opened it up and i saw the street view and saw the two second two-story massing it was like whoa but this is where site visits really do come into play and it gives you a three-dimensional view and and having traveled shannon numerous times i understand the need of wanting to preserve the backyard so that is a strong reason not to have a one-story home. So I d and the architecture and the mass is in keeping. I do believe with the with the larger neighborhood. Um, I do see the height differential, but again, the two homes are of a 
architectural type that isn't necessarily one that we are strongly trying to preserve within the neighborhood. So based on all the information that I've heard today, I don't see any reason why not to approve the application as proposed. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Vice Chair Birch. In keeping with uh, what Commissioner Sayak was saying, I also want to uh, thank staff for their diligence. I know that sometimes these can seem rather cut and dry, but you know, when you find in our verbiage, there can always be a gray area. And I think it's always wise that in that case that we turn it over. And it also gives us a chance to hear the public comment, um, which is obviously resoundingly an approval of this project. Um, I'd also like to thank your architect for the rendering. Um, I think as what she, Commissioner Sayak was saying, things can look one way um, on a blueprint. And then when you actually see with the shadowing and the landscaping, you can actually get a completely different feel for a project. So I would like to thank you for taking that extra step for us today. Um, I do feel that this is going to be a wonderful benefit to the neighborhood and um, a wonderful home for your family. I think the backyard is going to be great for your children to play. And uh, I don't see any reason why I would not support this project. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner O'Donnell. The difficulty with this home, and, and it really isn't the home, I think the home is very nicely designed, and I'm not really against two stories here. The problem that we've had over the years is the county um, has not had as re much regard for the town of Los Gatos as the town of Los Gatos does. We therefore have a number of very large homes that don't belong there uh, because they were in the county. So a neighborhood then can get defined by what the county did, notwithstanding their poor planning. So we faced that over and over again, and we faced it recently and said no. Uh, the problem is that we have to take the neighborhood as we find it, and I think the definition the staff used is a correct one, but we have some leeway here. I'm still troubled if every house on that street were that large, and you drove down that street, we'd have tremendous massing on that street. And the problem is that every time you approve one of these, then it's the next one is approved because the first one was approved. So I am very troubled by the sides of the home uh, going up and down that street because just as we're hearing the homes down the block are two stories, we're going to hear this home is two stories. That being said, however, I'm not against the two stories. Um, I, I, people have worked very hard, very hard. I'm troubled by the massing and I look at the, at the, the two peaks in the front, and I realize your, your design, it's a very nice design. And I'm, not, I'm going to listen to everybody else, and I'm not going to uh, lay in front of the train. But um, I kept hoping, or I keep hoping, there's a way to soften that. And I, too, went out to the property. And it's a very large house. And the, and the definition neighborhood would indicate that it is very large in, with our definition of neighborhood. And therefore, when the staff recommends denial, they are correct, but they also indicate that we have the discretion to go ahead and approve it, which sounds like we're going to do that. Uh, so the only thing I throw out for my fellow commissioners to consider, and I, uh, I hesitate to say it because I know you've spent a lot of money and a lot of time, and I appreciate that. If there was some way to soften that front roof line, um, that, is, uh, that is a large jump of space that will be facing the road, and that's really the only thing that bothers me. And I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to make a motion to condition that, but I am going to throw it out just to see if, what the other commissioners feel about that. I've heard two of them already that are in favor of it, and I see if anybody shares that concern. I made the same observation as uh, Mr. On that there's a, a difference as you drive down Shannon. The first half, uh, as you approach um, Cherry Blossom, it's mostly one-story homes. Um, they haven't been updated. But that second half of uh, Shannon, from Cherry Blossom to Short, there's a lot of two-story, large, custom homes. And I would be of the finding that this fits in and transitions nicely to that second half stretch of Shannon Road up to Short. Commissioner Erickson. So we have very good consulting architect who looks very uh, carefully at the interest of the town in design. So his final review of this provided a, an opinion to us that it's a well-designed home and 
as a two-story home, it's well designed, and and his only con his only observation was the only way to make it to have it le have less of an impact is for it to be a single-family home. That's clearly what his observation was. Um, so he gave us what I would interpret as a recommendation that we should move forward with this, um, and the guidance that we have from the council is that we should we should take the council, the council or the advice recommendations of the consulting architect, unless there are one or more of the following things in place, that his recommendation, the recommendation of the consulting architects were made based on erroneous information provided by the applicant. I don't think that's applicable in this case, that the consulting architect made a mistake of fact. I don't think that's applicable in this case, and that there's compelling evidence received through public testimony there's a privacy or other neighborhood impact to warrant plan modification i think we have public testimony this evening that would actually be the opposite of that so i think we have a very uh, we have a recommendation from the consulting architect and and from the guidance that we have from the council in terms of um, how we should evaluate their recommendation i would say that we don't have a basis other uh, otherwise than to support that recommendation Commissioner O'Donnell. I just want to say that the architect, of course, wrote two letters. The concluding letter, which was May 13th, concludes by saying, while the overall height at the main roof ridge and the floor to ceiling heights of the proposed harm are relatively high, the strong eave heights at the street front have been lowered to more sensitive. I don't read that as other than saying that the overall height at the main roof ridge and the floor to ceiling heights are relatively high which is not a conclusive opinion in my judgment. However, that being said, I'm not, you know, that, I, I just, it's clear to me that it's going to pass and I'm, and that's fine, that may be the right decision. But I would not say that one would have to go against the architect's opinion to agree with the architect that both the, the room heights and the overall height is, uh, is pretty high. So I, I just want to correct the record on what the architect all right, so now I'll make my comments. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone who came tonight because it is the support of the neighbors and the old cliche of it takes a village. Um, it may not take a village to build this home, but it does take neighborhood support and uh, the support of people who go up and down that street, as many of us do, and uh, we understand um, what, we, what we see. Um, I also appreciate the entire family coming because I think it does put a face to the facts. And then thirdly, I would like to uh, acknowledge the architect's rendering because as soon as it came up, it did um, put uh, more dimensions onto what we had already been considering. Um, I intend to support a motion if one of my fellow commissioners is going to make it. I do think this is... Um, it's a beautifully designed home to me, and it uh, actually reminds me of more of the historic character of Los Gatos than certainly the home uh, that exists at this time. Also, the fact that both neighbors on either side are in support of the project uh, was um, very persuasive to me as well. So they're not concerned about the home that's going up between them or its height. So um, having said that, um, so you know where I stand on this, do I have a motion from any commissioner who would like to um, approve? Yes, Commissioner Sayak. Sure, I'll go ahead and make the motion. I move to approve architecture and site application S-13-092 located at 16330 Shannon Road. I can make the findings that the project is categorically exempt. Um, that is uh, contained in Exhibit 2. I can also make the findings for demolition of a single-family resident, also contained in Exhibit 2, and make the finding for consistency with the residential design guides. In addition to what's in Exhibit 2, I would like to add to the record that um, the the architectural, um, the presentation today given by the designer really did add some three-dimensional um, depth to the application uh, that wasn't contained in the staff report, and that really did help, at least for me, make the decision that, that there's more of a basis for an approval. And I'd also, um, let's see, 
and make a finding that the project is consistent with considerations for review of um, architectural site and applications. All those are in exhibit two. Do I have a second? Commissioner Baudami? I'll second the motion. All right, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Mr. Paulson, is there any next step? There are appeal rights, so anyone who's not satisfied with the decision of the Planning Commission can appeal that decision to the Town Council. The forms are available in the Clerk's Office. There is a fee for filing the appeal, and the appeal must be filed within 10 days. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. And the Curry family is going to depart, I take it? Okay. All right, so we'll just give a moment for the room to clear, and then we're going to call agenda item two. Okay, we're now going to call agenda item two, which is, <laughs> for those who are watching the meeting, we've had some um, hooray yells outside, perhaps the children. All right, so now I'm going to call agenda item two, which is architecture and site application S13094, requesting approval for a single family residence greater than 5,000 square feet and a grading permit for a swimming pool on property located at 14411 Shannon Road. By a show of hands, may I see the commissioners who have visited the property? And are there any disclosures? Uh, seeing none, Ms. Savage, I understand you're going to be give us, giving us the report this evening. Good evening, Chair, Commissioners. The tw uh, property is over 25 acres and currently contains a single family dwelling, an attached garage. There is an error in the staff report. The garage is attached, a caretaker unit, and horse and boarding uh, training facilities. The proposed project style and materials would match the existing, and the architectural consultant pro found that the project, the addition, was well designed. However, the square footage proposed with the project would be over the maximum floor area allowed on the site and would also be the largest square footage in the neighborhood. If you count just the house, that is the house square footage and the attic, but not the caretaker unit or the garage square footage over 400 square feet, the request to exceed the maximum FAR is 942 square feet. The project is being referred to the Planning Commission because the house would be over 5,000 square feet and there is a request to exceed the maximum. Exceptions to the maximum FAR can be granted uh, under certain conditions which are specified in the Hillside Development Standards and Guidelines and the applicants have provided justification to meet those conditions. This concludes staff presentation and staff is available for any questions. Any questions of Ms. Savage? Uh, seeing none. We'll move into uh, the hearing. And I would like to give the applicant a uh, step forward, Mr. Kirkorkian. And if you could step forward and know that you have five minutes to address us. Okay, good Ms. evening, everyone. I'm John Kirkorian. I reside at 14411 Shannon Road. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, and listening to our, uh, for approval of our project. Um, so I'm a Las Gatas native. Uh, the only time I haven't lived in town is when I was at college. Um, so for my whole life, I've lived in Las Gatas Montesarino. I love the town and very proud to call it home. Um, so prior to moving to Shannon, uh, we lived on Wagner Road, which is just up the street off Hicks. And we were in a 8,000 square foot residence, uh, 25, 000, 25 acres um, in the county. Um, it had multiple levels and probably the type of home that you would not want on your hillside here. Um, when this property came up, uh, it's our dream property given the horse uh, riding arena and the horse stalls um, and the ranch style home. Um, so we're a family of five and uh, uh, we have family in the, in the immediate area, parents. Um, so one day, I imagine one or Two of our parents will be moving in with us. Um, we're very active in the community. We hold fundraisers uh, for schools and uh, charities. Um, so we hold those at our homes, at our home. So that um, trying to justify um, having over 
and needing over 5,000 square feet. Um, also, I believe that we're a special uh, circumstance uh, given the 25 acres and the uh, riding arena and the stalls. It takes a lot of energy. Um, so one day, we're going to need a little additional help um, given the caretaker's cottage and um, uh, the larger size garage and exceeding the FAR. Um, we have multiple tractors. If you've been out there, we a lot of equipment necessary to take care of the property. Um, we're going to implement, we want to implement solar. We want to use green materials. Uh, when we remodel, uh, demo the house, uh, we want to donate a lot of the materials. Probably uh, I need to do some research on it, but I'm working on it for Habitat for Humanity. So um, I appreciate your time and can answer any questions. Uh, thank you. So stay right there. Any questions of the applicant? Seeing none, um, we're, oh, here we have some speakers. So I'm going to call some other speakers, and maybe when they're speaking, you'll think of some things you want to share with us, and we'll call you back. So we'll call Lee Quintana. Lee Quintana, Five Palm Avenue. Um, staff may have to confirm this for me, but I believe this is uh, the same project that I'm thinking of on Shannon Road when I was on the Planning Commission uh, that requested the riding arena and the barn. And uh, there was some controversy about it, and ultimately it was approved. And part of the rationale for approving it at that time was that the house and the caretaker's unit was within the limits of the um, hillside design guidelines without asking for exceptions. Uh, that's the background that I remember. And um, it seems to me that background should be taken into consideration when uh, discussing uh, expanding the house to this level. Uh, the caretaker's unit was built specifically because of the, the riding arena and the stables, and that's why it was allowed. And that's all I really have to say. I can't, I haven't gone out to the site, I haven't looked at the story polls, uh, but uh, it seems to me that history of why that particular house was approved at that particular size should be considered. Um, Mr. Weinman. Hi, I'm Herb Weinman. I live at 14475 Shannon Road, right next door. I'm on the westerly side of their property. And uh, nobody asked me to come here to, <coughs> to speak. I've never even met Mr. Corian before. And I've, I'm an engineer. I did look at the plans and went and they feel very in keeping with the uh, size of the property. The house is recessed from the street, and it's not obtrusive in any way. So my feeling is that it should be considered as something to have done. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Weinman? Seeing none, thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to come back up and Use your three minutes or you're um, satisfied. We have no other speakers. Any questions for the applicant? Seeing none. All right, so you're fine. All right, then I'm going to close the public portion of the public hearing and uh, invite the commissioners to make comments, make a motion, or ask any questions of staff they may have. Commissioner Sayak. Thank you. Um, Ms. Quintana's comment made um, me realize a question of staff. There were no story polls when I visited. Was there a reason why? Uh, the project is not a technical demo. It's not a new house. It's just a single story addition, and per our policy, are not the story polls are not required. Oh, okay. Thank you. Commissioner O'Donnell. I was just curious. Uh, do you know how the 25 acres is parcelized? Can you tell me what you mean by parcelized? Uh, well, I don't think the 25 acres is one parcel, I guess I'm saying. And, and therefore, when, we, when we're talking about the house being on 25 acres, I'm just curious 
as the time goes by, it won't be on 25 acres. But if I knew the, the, the site upon which the uh, improvements rest, I might have a, well, I would at least know if that's a parcel as opposed to 25 acres. The property is one parcel of over 25 acres. So a single parcel. Correct. Okay. Thank yes. you. Commissioner Sayak. Uh, one more question for staff. One of the um, one of the issues is that with the addition of the caretaker unit, it adds square footage to the overall property, correct? And one of the things that I know that the Housing Element Advisory Board is looking into is the addition of secondary units. So the question is, and I probably already know this, but I'd like to have some legal advice, knowing what we would like to do in the future versus what is an application before us, what um, flexibility do we have with this application in, in, when looking at square footage? So the caretaker unit, not second unit, um, is existing. And it's as it is existing, it's really the addition to the house that you would be considering tonight. Um, the Hillside Development Standards and Guidelines do provide uh, a process and the ability to grant an exception to the floor area ratio. So um, I shouldn't even take into consideration that there's a secondary unit on the site? Um, you, you may, because the, the square footage for the caretaker unit um, does count towards the, the floor area, um, pursuant to the Hillside Development Standards and Guidelines. Uh, but you can also consider the fact that it is a separate structure from the house, um, perhaps taking that consideration um, into considering the, re the applicant's request to add to the, the house itself. Okay, thank you. Commissioner O'Donnell. I just want to also say that unlike many hillside um, sites, this is not what I would typically think of as a hillside site. The, the view of that home is not going to impact anybody, I don't think. Uh, so it is a very large home if it's built as he wishes, but it, it's not up on a real hill, so it's not going to impair, I don't think, anybody's vision, which would be something we'd be interested in. So it's an unusual and favorable lot for that purpose. Any other, co Commissioner Birch? I was just curious, um, based on the comments of Ms. Cantata, do we know if there was anything written into the CUP that restricted any square footage or recommended anything concerning the square footage? Nothing was written into the conditional use permit or the architecture inside application. However, I'm n uh, we're not aware of whether that was a discussion point at the hearing back in 2000. Commissioner Badami. But the hillside standards and guidelines came about in 2004, which is after 2000. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, well then I'll uh, make my comments and they are similar to Commissioner O'Donnell's. I think that this is um, a, um, a, an application that I can look on favorably the positioning of the home has been done uh, very tastefully uh, into this hillside. I don't see where this um, obstructs anyone's view or actually uh, even just driving down the road uh, would make one um, stop and notice that there was something unusual or imposing uh, about this home. The addition is going to be single story. And um, also, as we think about um, our affordable housing discussions that we've had in secondary units uh, in the hillside, um, I'm more inclined to deduct the care caretakers' numbers from these, and then um, the home actually is is um, is less square footage um, than we um, than is calculated. So, in any case, I would look favorably on a motion if one of my fellow commissioners would like to make it for approval. So just so that you know, that's my position at this time. Do I have a motion? Do I have a comment? Okay, Commissioner O'Donnell. Go ahead and make a motion. Um, the motion would be that uh, we approve the project and find, uh, one, find the project is categorically exempt as stated in exhibit two. Uh, make the finding that the project complies with the hill, hillside development standards and guidelines 
as required by the Hillside Development Standards and Guidelines, and particularly in light of the, of the physical surroundings and setting of the site. Uh, make the findings or considerations as required by Section 2920.150 of the Town Code for granting approval of an architectural and site application, see Exhibit 2, and approve the architecture and site application S13094 with the conditions contained in Exhibit 3 and the development plans attached as Exhibit 11. Do I have a second? Commissioner Badami? I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The uh, motion then passes. Mr. Paulson, is there further an additional step? Yes, there are appeal rights. Anyone who's not satisfied with the decision of the Planning Commission can appeal that decision to the Town Council. The forms are available in the clerk's office. There's a fee for filing the appeal, and the appeal must be filed within 10 days. Thank you. So, sir, you've been approved. All right. I'm now going to call agenda item three, which is an appeal of a decision of the Director of Community Development denying a fence height exception request on property located at 303 Old Blossom Hill Road. By a show of hands, may I see the commissioners who have visited the property? And are there any disclosures? Seeing none, Ms. Savage, uh, could you present the report, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, fence height exceptions can be granted for uh, under two circumstances pursuant to the town code. One is a special privacy concern. The other one is a wildlife problem. In this particular case, it is not a wildlife problem, but they are c uh, considering privacy concerns. Uh, the town code considers whether privacy can be addressed with additional la landscaping. Given the the physical design of the property. Staff does, uh, it does appear that additional landscaping could address the concerns of the property owner. The appellant provides safety and privacy concerns in order to grant the appeal. This concludes staff presentation and staff is available for any questions. Any questions of staff? Uh, seeing none, then I'd like to call the appellant who is, um, are you both going to speak, Shannon and Renette? Just you, Mr. Hart? Okay. Then, sir, you have five minutes to address us and, um, and then stay at the podium in case we have any questions. Great. First, thank you uh, for letting me address you. It's Shannon Hart and my wife, Renee, from 301 Old Blossom Hill Road. Los and if you could just take that microphone and lift it just slightly. Thank you. Better? That's fine. Oh, great. Thank you. Again, um, Reading through the codes and putting our, our uh, exception together, it does, in Section 29.4, it talks about uh, special privacy concerns that can't be mitigated with additional landscaping or tree guarding. We have uh, been living there for about two years now and just happy to be here. We never thought we'd be able to live in Los Gatos with our young children and have them here in the schools and everything we have. So it is something we're glad to be here and just uh, enjoy the area. The uh, special concerns that we have that exist We've lived here for, for two years in the home, have a pool in the backyard. We want the kids outside. They're eight and 10 years old. We don't want them inside. So we have dinner, family dinners outside most evenings and being out there. We've had landscaping up on the wall for uh, a couple of years now. We've got, um, and our biggest issue is, is not with the privacy, but so much more with the safety. We've had multiple incidents of rocks coming over, people throwing bottles over. There's, this was just a couple of weeks ago that a truck drove by and this rock came out from under a tire and landed in the pool where the kids were actually were, we were all out there in the backyard so it kind of scary when something this big comes over the fence and hits it and that was with the landscaping that was in place at the time was not able to stop the uh, the uh, incident from happening um, the other one is the early mornings uh, I know people talked about Shannon Road earlier and the, the traffic on it in the mornings the truck traffic on on Blossom Hill Road is enormous and the trucks coming by and everything the the height of it is a constant flash of the top lights on all the trucks come by light up the back of the house so that's the master bedroom and one of the rear bedrooms so in adding some uh, 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 fence height exception would would mitigate a portion of that there's also the driveway across the street any cars exiting it it's a reduced driveway and when they aim up and drive out of there the headlights come straight in to the our, the master bedroom and light up the entire bedroom. So that's uh, the 
It's kind of the third concern. Again, that, that's with landscaping in place, and it's not able to uh, mitigate that. Um, that's where we feel that a, a combination of the both elements would be our strongest approach to mitigate both the safety and the privacy concerns. We are planning more landscaping is in process right now, and we want to then add the fence uh, height behind that as a secondary to it. The increase will match the existing fence. The contractors verified that all the rock veneer is still available. The top cappers are still available. So everything will match exactly as it is now. The, uh, there's no uh, impeding of the neighbor's views of the hills or no shadowing or anything occurs. Their fence from across the street actually blocks. In their front yard, you can't see our fence from that area. There's no driveways at either end of the, view, either end of the property that would uh, impede people's view from turning and cause a traffic problem. I believe that is that's all the questions all the comments I add to it again it's um, one of the things we're trying to do is, is mitigate and provide the privacy and the safety in the backyard for our family and children and for our family to be out there and enjoy the outdoors there so thank you for your time thank you any questions of the applicant vice chair Birch on the photos that were provided there is one particular p photo that shows the Redwood fence between your house, it says right, and then the neighbor, which I assume is on the left. Do you have that photo? No yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious, because obviously there's no way to scale this. In the middle, you see that there's a redwood fence. In comparison to the height of the, oh, sorry. I don't, do you know what page it's on? I, no, I don't. Uh, of the pictures. Yeah. It's the second page of the pictures. Yeah, I've got it. It's okay. the one that's titled at the bottom. Property line is redwood fence between our house on the right side, neighbor on the left. Yes. So if the your fence, which or wall on the right, was raised to the height you're requesting, in scale with the redwood fence or the neighbor on the left, how, how high would that be? Would you be meeting the top of the redwood fence? We'd be right at that top of that redwood, top of the redwood fence right now is about 20 two inches to the top of that, the top two by four capper on top of, or two by six cap that's on top of that. Okay, okay, thank you. Commissioner um, Badami. Uh, exhibit three, um, your letter dated April 3rd of 2014. It describes your reasoning for a fence height exception and you talk about large amounts of foot traffic along the street as opposed to cars uh, being traffic. I drove by there several times and I, I didn't see anybody. So can you tell me where you think the foot traffic is coming from? I have no idea where people are coming, but during the evenings, at night, weekends, Friday, Saturday nights, I don't know where. We have the same questions ourselves. Where are these people? But all night you can hear people parking. They park along that road. I think after 6 p.m. it's you can park there. So people walking, parking, and I don't know where they're if they're coming across the footbridge on, a, uh, not Stephanie, but the next one you can get over into the, by Union Elementary School, there's a footbridge. I don't know if people are cutting through there to get into downtown Los Gatos or what, but there is a, a tremendous amount in the evenings of walking. I mean, the trash I pick up a couple of times a week, I walk back there and just pick up cans and beer bottles and trash and stuff just along the street there that's coming from somewhere. So. Uh, one more question. Um, yes, sure. You okay, you also mentioned people looking in your backyard. Uh, I, so, I mean, I, I walked along there, and it seems like people would have to go out of their way to peek over the fence. So why are. would people so feel we compelled? Had, uh, four, about four or five weeks ago, there was uh, kids were back there, and they can come over, and the height of it now you can grab, and that it acts like just mini stairs, and people were coming up and looking over the top and seeing what our kids, I guess they heard our kids back there playing in the pool, and and playing around. I, it seems like they have to cross a three foot fence and then climb up there and then they jump up and grab the top fence and we're lifting themselves up and looking over the fence. If you're going to make a comment, we'll, we'll have to wait for you to make a comment, okay? All right. Thank you. Commissioner O'Donnell. I'm sympathetic with your issues, but let me make sure I understand them. If you raise that um, 
wall, the second wall, because there are really two walls. There's three yes, feet, sir. and then there's six, six plus. So you're at nine feet, really, from the street level or from the sidewalk level. Uh, people are still going to throw things over. I don't care, but that. So as far as a, somebody uh, grabbing a hold and going up, one would think if you, um, I looked at the planning along those planter strips. Your planning looks fine, but as you go down there, it looks like people are letting it die. There are a lot of dead plants there. Um, I'm wondering if you wouldn't be better served by having a plant life there that would dissuade, must be youngsters from wanting to come over there and peek over the top looking at kids swimming. Um, so have, do you think landscaping wouldn't work, is that right? So we've been, as I mentioned in the earlier comments, we've been there two years now and we had a much thicker landscaping. We had rose bushes. That was our thought was to put a briar patch in there. We had rose bushes planted and other things, and it's not, it's not working. So, I mean, maybe it's, it's impeding or stopping some of it, but what we're saying is that, that, yes, raising the wall alone doesn't solve all of our problems. The landscaping we've lived with and tried for two years, and that hasn't solved the problem. So now we're, we're going with more landscaping, and we want to go with a wall increase because once we get the landscaping grown in and everything, talking to the contractors to get in and do the job, they'd have to rip all the landscaping out. So we want to put the, the wall in and add landscaping on top of that to kind of a double, a double prevention. And you're talking about matching the lower wall. Is that uh, one of the questions I have in my mind is whether an eight foot, very uh, formidable wall would be as good as a six foot wall with a extension on it uh, because some uh, y your side fences, for example, are wood, and, and it looks like it's about eight feet. Uh, I, I'm not a designer, and I'm not suggesting that, but I'm just wondering, are you suggesting the stone simply because there's stone there or because you think stone would be the best thing to do? We were, again, the least expensive was to put wood on top of it. We were, we were recommending, and we want to go with stone, so we match the, the look and the feel of it coming all the way down so it doesn't look like something that's been a cheap add-on to the top of it. It but wants you, to match Your, your exactly. two-foot addition will be totally different than your neighbor's, so we'll have a two-foot extension unlike your neighbor's, right? No, sir. It'll be the same. If you look at one of the pictures where that the, the uh, picture we were just discussing about to the left and to the right, instead of that stepping down at that point, it'll step up to our added rock fence. One so, of them is going to be taller than the other, right? Yes, sir. The, right now, the neighbor's is, is taller than ours, and in the, if it granted, then we would grow it, and ours would then be taller than the neighbor's. How much taller would you be? About 15 to 18 inches. Just look at, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the pictures with you. I don't. So am I. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I have a question for you, yes. and I just want to make sure about the cypress trees that are planted there now, the, the small ones. Um, what you want to do is to plant cypress trees, correct? Did I understand that according to this, this picture? Yes, ma'am. And they're fast growing, and they're also, they can be compacted in and make their own wall. So what I'm wondering is, um, I, what we're struggling with here is that when you stand on that sidewalk, you're, you're going to be looking straight up at a nine-foot stone wall. And so that's our issue, and I'm sure it was the staff's issue as well, just looking straight up. It, uh, it seems to me that those cypresses are going to grow very fast, and that's going to solve your problem. So I, I'm not sure that there is a benefit to putting that extra height on that wall um, I, I, I'm not sure the purpose of it. The, uh, as I mentioned earlier, so the arborist that we've had in talking to from local Los Cabos arborists has told us five to seven years we'll get some partial growing, like 10 to 12 before it'll be full grown in. If you look across the street at the size of them to get to about a four foot bush diameter, maybe greater than 10 years to get to that. Five to seven they will begin to touch together according to the arborist. I'm not, I just go out there and work on the drip irrigation constantly, but they're, they're there, we're trying to grow them, and as I mentioned earlier, we feel that the wall behind the, the landscaping is just an added uh, measure of, for safety, and if this rock like this that flew out from under a car tire, it, a tree wouldn't have stopped it, and it's not gonna be a high flying, it was a, 
a line drive straight up. So I know it's not going to grab everything, but we're just trying to do everything that we can to to mitigate some of this. And as you mentioned earlier, people walking by and other things, it's not the, the area it's in, I agree with you, it will be tall looking up towards it, but there isn't a lot of leisure people walking up and down that during the daylight hours. I don't see people during the daytime hardly at all back there. It seems to be all in the evenings and at night when we get all the the foot traffic and pedestrian traffic up and down Blossom Mill Road. Okay. Uh, any other questions of the applicant? Seeing none, um, I'm going to call you back up. In uh, to you will have an additional three minutes. So if you think of anything else you would like to add at that time, uh, I do have a picture I can submit that I did that shows where it would be. I don't know if. I'm going to submit that to the staff, and they, we could pass that around. Oh, the overhead would be even better. Thank you. Could you uh, take the microphone over to you? You could just slip it out. So this looks back on the, look, standing in our backyard looking at the left corner. At the top here you see, this is a truck driving by. This is kind of to go to some of the, the lighting and the other things that happened. This brown line that I've drawn over, that's approximately where the top would be at. So you can see here's without it, kind of just to scale so you see. And I put up a, a yardstick here up to see where the top would be and then this is the uh, showing that with the uh, wall extension we'd get majority of the truck traffic and the lights that are flashing in and we'd get a hundred percent blocking of the cars pulling out of this driveway right here which is when they pull out of it up at an angle it uh, shines directly into the bedroom where we're at I think that's kind of shows the size of where it would be I should probably ask you this question then. Um, from the backyard to your edge of your pool is how much distance approximately? From the from the house? Uh, fr from the fence that's there now or from the wall that's there now to the side of the pool? It's six or eight feet. I, I can't remember the exact. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, no other questions, sir. If you'd like to have a seat, we will call our next speaker. Thank you. Who will be Mr. Chan. Oh, number three, sorry. Well, this is number three. He says, oh, he's withdrawing. Is that what he said? Thank you very much. All right, so um, Mr. Hart or Mrs. Hart, either one of you would like to address us with anything that you can think of we, we need to hear or need to know before we start our deliberations. So you're fine. All right. Then I'm going to close the public portion of the public hearing and um, ask the commissioners if they have any Comments, um, motions, or questions of staff? Commissioner O'Donnell. Question of staff. Um, is it possible to approve uh, an extension for a period of time? In other words, we've been hearing about the growth of poplar trees, and, and I believe the applicant when he says it's going to take X number of years. And during that period, his kids will grow up and go away. Um, is it possible to approve, for example, a, a, a wood uh, extension with the attitude well with the limit on that extension being for a period of years a reasonable period of years in which time growth would occur um, it's a very formidable wall and uh, I can understand the need but I'm trying to wonder if there's any other solution to the problem I have not ever seen that done. So, I mean, I, I suppose it could be conditioned to elapse at a certain period of time. Most CUPs, though, run with the land and that once they're approved uh, are not, you know, subject to being renewed. I, I know there's that law, but whether you could 
Well, it reminds have you it that mobile home parks, for example, have a 25-year hmm. life. So obviously there is precedent for a limitation. So unless there's some reason to believe we can't, you think we could, you're just not familiar with it. Okay, that's, that's helpful. I don't know how anybody else feels. Ms. Savage, were you going to say something? I was just going to state that you, uh, you could, you do have the option of conditioning, conditioning the, tree, the fence height exception uh, for a period of time. Uh, the attorney is correct that we, we haven't seen it done before, but it is your option. All right. Any other comments? Commissioner Sayak. Okay. Um, I ca um, similar to the line of thought that Commissioner O'Donnell is going with, I certainly understand the applicant's concerns, and I think they've provided justification, and, and um, I think rock is evidence that landscaping is, is something that wouldn't have prevented the, the security concerns that they are looking for. And so while the applicant was speaking, I was also thinking of, okay, well, what are some of the solutions we can get to so that we can reach a solution versus just saying no? And um, there are a couple. One is we condition that the, the trees go up so that we do know that eventually within five, six years, we do have that landscaping that will eventually soften it. Um, another thing I was thinking of is that um, we could ask our arborist if there's, if there's some, um, oh, I'm, I'm blanking now, ivy, some, some vines that could help soften such a large wall. Um, I do think the, the line of that I'm going with is that there's justification in my mind for raising it, and there are probably some solutions in trying to mitigate such a large wall, and I just don't know what it is at this point, but I think that is something I'm comfortable staff working with the applicant in achieving, understanding that they see where our concerns lie with such a large stone wall in front of us. say something yes certainly uh, while you were talking I was thinking along the same lines except that I suppose if one did extend this wall as suggested and planted then there, there wouldn't be any visibility from the street side the only place there'd be a visibility is from their yard I wouldn't want to look at an eight-foot wall from my yard but it's their yard and I we're not trying to protect you from what you want uh, so it is possible that rather than do what I was thinking of a, a a time limitation on it, we would require the planning of satisfaction of staff, the plants suggested, and that they be maintained, obviously, because some of the plants down the street are not maintained, in that which case the public would not be exposed to what I consider to be an awfully high wall, um, and that might solve everybody's problem. Um, I have a question of the town attorney. So uh, I'm just trying to think about formulating uh, how a motion, following the lines of Commissioner Sayak and Commissioner O'Donnell, we um, grant the appeal with conditions. Is that uh, what we're looking at? Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, seeing clarity with that, Commissioner O'Donnell, would you like to make a motion or Commissioner Sayak? Fellow commissioners, we've, we've got two possibilities here that we've talked about, and uh, I'm open, very frankly, for either of them, but I sure would appreciate hearing from my fellow commissioners to see if somebody has a, a leaning towards one or the other. Commissioner Birch? So I was thinking along the lines of what you were just speaking of, that since there was going to be planting on the street side of this wall, it isn't going to be a large imposing stone wall. Um, However, I do think that we should condition that along with trees that maybe take 12 years, along lines of what you're saying, perhaps there's a faster growing wisteria or something that could be planted along the top of it to soften it in the meantime. Um, and I think that if the applicant would do those things, this would not be a high impact on the neighborhood or Blossom Hill. I don't think it's something anyone would even notice as they drove by. A motion in that regard. I would move uh, that we grant the appeal. Uh, subject, however, uh, well, first the findings. It's exempt um, under Section 15.303 of, uh, of CEQA, the uh, State Environmental Guidelines. Uh, it's categorically exempt. 
and is required by Section 2940.030B4 of the Town uh, Code for granting a uh, height uh, ex exception. I think we have heard testimony which would support um, particularly the uh, privacy concern under that Section A. Uh, subject, however, to two conditions. One that within the um, area between the lower wall of three feet and the new wall, well, the new extension wall, uh, plants be planted as, as suggested by the applicant and maintained an, an irrigation uh, set. Um, and that, uh, so that would be one condition bef on the building of the additional two feet. Uh, and secondly, that in the interim while those plants are growing and thereafter, as the applicant may wish, uh, some planting be done to the top of that wall to soften the look of that uh, top of the wall to the public. That planning, however, would be subject to the town's selection and approval. I'm a no, ex I'm a no expert. Uh, we've lost John Bourgeois, who knew all that stuff. Um, so I just leave that up to staff. So that would be the motion. Do I have a second, Commissioner Birch? I'll second the motion. Any discussion among commissioners? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. And uh, Mr. Paulson, are there next steps? There are appeal rights. Anyone who's not satisfied with the decision of the Planning Commission can appeal that decision to the Town Council. There is a fee for filing the appeal. The forms are available in the clerk's office and the appeal must be filed within 10 days. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Hart. I will now call agenda item four, which is architecture and site application S14022, requesting approval to construct an elevated pedestrian bridge between two commercial buildings on property located at 121, 131 Albright Way. By a show of hands, may I see the commissioners who have visited the property and are there any disclosures at this time? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Paulson, are you going to give the report? Yeah, brief, brief staff report. Um, obviously, as those of you are aware, the town council approved a plan development and an architecture and site application for the Albright Office Park in June of 2013. Staff provided a lot of background in the additional background in the staff report. Um, as stated by Chair Smith, the applicant is proposing to install a pedestrian bridge between building one and two. Building one is the uh, building closest to Highway 85, and building two is the um, next one uh, moving south. And so that pedestrian bridge would be connected at the third floor of the three-story building one and the third story, um, a third floor of the four-story building two. The approximate square footage of the building is 800, or of the pedestrian walkway, sorry, is 850 square feet. Um, the applicant has submitted a letter and development plans which are in your packet that detail and outline their proposal. Um, the town's consulting architect has reviewed the pedestrian bridge um, and found it to be uh, well done and complementing of the approved design of the buildings for the site. Additionally, pursuant to a settlement agreement that was reached earlier this year, um, the applicant will be required to pay $1 per square foot of the pedestrian bridge for community benefit. Um, the project's in substantial conformance with the plan development as approved. It's consistent with the applicable, applicable provisions of the uh, commercial design guidelines, which in this case are the common design guidelines. Um, the proposed pedestrian bridge will have the same high quality architectural style and materials as the proposed buildings. And staff recommends that the Planning Commission um, review the application and forward a recommendation to the Town Council for approval as outlined in staff's um, report. And we're available if you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Uh, Commissioner O'Donnell. I'm just curious, uh, what effect, if at all, did the initiative have on this? Very little. Uh. <laughs> Could you expand on that a little bit? <laughs> the initiative that was passed uh, specifically passed a specific plan for this property, and that specific, spe specific plan included these bridges. So it was part of the initiative that was passed that included these bridges, but as part of the settlement, 
they agreed to comply with the previous plan development, which did not include the bridges, which did not include the bridges. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll start over. <laughs> the, the initiative um, that was passed included the passing of a specific plan for this property, and that property included the bridges. So the initiative had a specific plan that included the bridges, but the plan development did not. But as part of the settlement agreement that the applicant agreed to was to comply with the plan development that was passed by the Planning Commission and by the, the City Council. So because the applicant agreed to comply with the plan development and take this through the architectural and site committee, that is why it has to go through you. So that's why my initial reaction was the initiative really didn't affect this at all because the applicant prior to that initiative being passed agreed to comply with the plan development and agreed to take this process through the architectural and site review process, Thank even you. though that wasn't part of the initiative. Thank you very much. Um, I do have one question, Mr. Paulson, as well. Can you walk um, us through the lighting of the um, bridge, what was approved? The lighting of the bridge, um, if you want to make that part of your recommendation, it would be similar lighting to that of the interior of the building. And uh, additionally, I believe the applicant's architect is here and may be able to shed some more light on that for you. Thank you. All right, so... Um, we are now going to open the public portion of the public hearing, and we're going to give the applicant an opportunity to address the commission. And Mr. Schenk, I know you know the rules of the road, so step forward and identify yourself, and you know you have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair Smith and Planning Commissioners and staff. John Schenk here representing uh, LG Business Park, and but also tonight the applicant, Netflix. Uh, it is an application from Netflix for this bridge. The bridge itself is uh, kind of got inspiration from the existing two buildings that are the current Netflix headquarters at the Gateway Project. A bridge was added um, between those buildings that acts as uh, an elevated walkway, as it's called, where it just allows the function and flow of the floors uh, to be enhanced. And Netflix would like to mirror that functionality over into these buildings. Um, the uh, architect, Bob uh, Giannini from Form 4, is here, uh, who was the architect on the Gateway Project as well, coincidentally. Um, when you, you know, somebody told me, when, uh, you know, don't hate what's great. So um, I'd like to walk you through that, um, let Bob share some in uh, the real details of it. Um, we, uh, we hope that you like it. We hope that you understand it's, uh, the, the practical nature of it. Um, and of course, Larry Cannon's opinions are, are ones that uh, we're, we're flattered by and happen to agree with as well. So if, just a little bit of the time, we'll let Bob jump up here and he's got a couple of pictures to show you as well. And then, sir, I'll need for you to fill out a speaker card as well, okay? Go ahead. Uh, thank you. My name is Bob Giannini uh, from Forum for Architecture. I was the designer on the project. And John did a good job, I think, of describing sort of the pragmatic needs of the, uh, of the walkway. Uh, Netflix has very large departments. They actually don't fit on one floor. So as with their existing buildings, the walkway between buildings helps the functionality and to try and make it as seamless as possible as, as folks use the building. On the aesthetic side, though, when we had the opportunity to design the walkway, we wanted to make it something that would be memorable and sort of enhance the design. So we did pick all the uh, vocabulary of the existing building. I have a few pictures here. Um, but also wanted to make sure, sort of use kind of the sustainability aspect of it to sort of interject uh, um, some additional pieces to the building. So since it is a rather small space, uh, it can heat up, so we've uh, provided a big horizontal sunshade to, to shade the overhead sun. And then since these buildings also get an east-west um, exposure, we've uh, incorporated glass fins. So the main building has uh, metal fins to protect it from the sun and shade itself. But in the case of the, of the walkway, we did that with uh, the same metal, but then also with vertical glass. And I do have materials I can... Uh, show you with me. Um, and that really describes uh, the, describes the bridge. On the lighting, um, the lighting would be very subtle. It would just be down lights in the, in the ceiling of the, uh, 
of the walkway that would just provide, uh, nobody works in that, so they're just walking through. So just sort of the minimum amount of light to get you through the, through the walkway. Thank you. Commissioner Sayak. Um, aesthetically, I think it's a beautiful design. One of the things um, that C Chair Smith had talked about was lighting. And if you could just walk me through the glass that you're using. With Hillside Homes, we put certain reflectivity on design so that you don't have this glare. And so it, it looks like you're going to show us I have, samples. I have materials that might help you. Perfect. Thank you. Let's see, here's what we want you to do. We want you to uh, probably come this way, I think. And tell us, so the first black square that's coming through. <laughs> yeah, so the, so the major part of the walkway is clear glass. It's the same glass that's on the building. It's a low emissivity coating, so it actually, um, works very hard not to reflect the sun. It, it absorbs it, so there's a coating within the glass. The, uh, the polka dot material that's coming through is the material of the glass sunshade, so that also adds quite a bit of um, opacity to the, to the bridge. When you see, the, when you see it um, obliquely, you're basically looking at that fritted glass. And then the aluminum is the, uh, is the aluminum that's on the building uh, in every case. So those are the materials. So the glass is very non-reflective. So bear with me. So this is, this is the window. Yes. This would be the paneling. I'm trying to put it together. Mm -hmm. this, and then this would be the side of it. That would be? The, so you notice the glass fins that come out vertically? Yes. That would be the um, fritted material. OK. And then one last question. Once it's designed, if for some reason, it emits much more sunlight than we care to. Is there something that can be done to fix it? Um, yes, you could always put a film on it, but, the, but that would actually defeat the purpose of the glass a little bit. It really is designed to um, control uh, glare and sun. Okay. And fun. also, we did also provide photo simulations, and actually you'll notice in those, as with the rest of the buildings, it's very difficult to um, see the see the walkway at all from outside of the site, even if the sun were to hit it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Birch. I'm going to go back to the lighting question. Um, the drawing that you have here, um, which I of course just lost, so sorry. A three point two point one only shows downlights on the underside of the walkway. Yes. So. I want to go through both scenarios. You're going to have down lights on the underside of the walkway. Will those be on a time switch to come on in the evenings? Um, all the lights are on dimmers. I think it's required by code that the lights be controlled, have motion sensors and, and things like that. So, so the ones on the, I'm, I'm talking about the, the exterior, so on the bottom side of the walkway. Right. Those switch on based on the time of the year at 6 or 9 p.m. and they're on a, a low setting just for safety i assume correct sure say, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're coordinated with the other exterior lights that are a part of the project okay mm -hmm. and then the down lights that would actually be in the walkway for those that work late will be on a motion sensor so they won't be glaring all night it'll be just as people pass through that's right exactly okay thank you and that was my uh, question as well i just wanted to make sure that as you uh, i know you say that probably the plantings, the trees and things are right. going to hide it all, but I didn't want the um, lighthouse effect. You know, you're right. driving by and out of nowhere there's the spaceship lights, right. you know, because you can't see the buildings, but you could see the lights right. on the walkway. But they will be motion yes. sensitive. Yeah, all the lights in the building are that way. Yes. All right, thank you. No further questions? All right, uh, if you want to have a seat and... Maybe use the time to think about um, anything else 
that you might have wanted to share with us. We only have one speaker card, so if there's going to be any uh, one additional, you need to come forward now with your card. Otherwise, I'd like to call Maria Risto. Hi, Maria Risto, 85 Broadway. No disrespect, I just came from a road ride and I wanted to be there, sorry. Um, so I think the bridge looks great. My biggest concern is as you think about and approve this bridge, it's um, the design of the project is symmetric and there are eventually probably gonna be two more buildings built and they'll have a bridge and that bridge could have an impact on Charter Oaks. So I think as you're thinking about how the bridge is going to look from the road, you also need to consider how it's going to look from Charter Oaks because I'm imagining these bridges will be the same as each other or the project won't look right. So I would just encourage you to continue the line of thinking around lights and how much it lights up at night. I mean, that could be more startling if it's going on and off or going lighter and dimmer. So that's all I would think. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Bristol? None. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Schenk or um, anyone, do you want to add anything to the comments you've already made? I think I'll just say thank you, and, um, and I saw you all raise your hands that you were out there. Hopefully you didn't go through the construction fence. But uh, we're well underway and um, look forward to getting the buildings up and occupied uh, next year. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Giannini. All right, so now I'm going to close the public portion of the public hearing and um, ask if the commissioners have any questions of staff, want to make a comment, or anyone wishes to make a motion. And um, I just want to clarify, too, that the motion would be that we're forwarding this to the town council for approval, not that we are approving it. All right, uh, Commissioner Erickson. Um, I'll introduce a motion. I'll move to forward a recommendation to the Town Council for approval of architecture and site application S-14-002, which is requesting, requesting approval to construct an elevated pedestrian bridge between the two commercial buildings on the property at, located on Albright Way. Um, the potential environmental impact of this proposed bridge is within the scope of the earlier environmental impact analysis that was in support of the earlier action of the town council. The project has been determined to be in substantial conformance with the applicable common design guidelines of the commercial design guidelines. The architectural site application is also in substantial conformance with the plan development ordinance adopted by the town council. And as required by Section 2920.150 of the Town Code, the considerations and review of an architectural site application were all made and are incorporated in the staff report. And, and with the particular note that the proposed pedestrian bridge will have the same high quality architectural style and materials as the proposed buildings that have been approved. And I believe use the same lighting approach as the buildings which have already been approved. So we'll have no other effect, no additional effect on adjacent, on, on the roadways or adjacent neighbors than the buildings themselves will have. And do I have a second? Commissioner Birch. I'll second the motion. All right, if I could just make a one a correction to, to the record. You indicated it was the application that ended in 002, but in fact it ends in 022. So I just want to make sure we have that correct for the record. Not a good Thank numbers you. guy. Thank you. Au contraire. <laughs> All right. Um, any more, uh, any further discussion by the commissioners? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. None opposed? Mr. Paulson. Oh. Uh, there are no appeal rights. This is a recommendation to the council, so um, it will be set for a council meeting and then duly noticed as required by town code. Thank you. So, Mr. Schenk, we are completed, and uh, we have completed our agenda items for this evening. Do we have um, any uh, a report from the Director of Community Development? We have another tandem report this evening. Mine will be very brief. Um, since you last met, the DRC has approved one 
project that was for the demolition and const- demolition of an existing home and construction of a new home at 460 Monterey Avenue, um, and that was approved by the DRC. And with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Prevetti. Thank you and good evening. I wanted to update you on the council's actions on the date of June 2nd. There were a number of notable actions that I'd like to brief you on. First of all, um, the ad hoc committee considering plan development uh, made their report to the town council and after substantial discussion, the council did refer the matter to you as planning commission. So staff is working to schedule that for you later on this summer, balancing the other work workload needs and the desire to do full noticing so that way members of the community can provide testimony to you and you can consider that in your deliberations and report back to to council. In addition, the council did approve the um, application for We Olive in downtown, so that has been approved. Uh, They also considered moving their meetings to Tuesdays from Mondays, and on Monday the 16th they will consider the the final adoption of that ordinance. They also approved the budget for next fiscal year and the leaf blower ordinance, which may also be of some interest to the commissioners and and the public. Um, I do also want to give you a brief staffing update date on Monday, July, uh, excuse me, June 23rd, we will have our new planning technician start providing counter services to our residents and businesses with the adoption of the new budget. That position moves to becoming a full-time position, providing better service uh, to our residents and businesses. As you know, uh, we have various staff transitions underway with a maternity leave coming up as well as um, one staff member moving to another community. Community. A recruitment uh, has occurred and uh, we got significant applications so we will be screening those and conducting interviews as quickly as we can. So just for the Commission's benefit we wanted you to know that we are working as quickly as we can to fill those gaps and we will try and meet our timeliness deadlines as best we can but uh, we also appreciate if there are any concerns that Joel and I are here to address those concerns by the commission or our residents and businesses. And with that, um, that concludes staff's report. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pervetti, if I could ask you a question. With the staffing of a full-time counter person, are we now going to expand hours for the planning department counter or we're going to continue as they were? We are um, currently looking at maintaining the hours that we have from 8 in the morning to 1 p.m. in the afternoon. This coincides with our ability to provide building services as well as business license services in the down in the basement area of Town Hall. We um, do anticipate that the planning technician will also help with some back office work and help us provide better accessibility and transparency on our applications. Uh, we're looking at website improvements etc so um, you know as time goes uh, and as things uh, improve if we can improve our hours and expand them we certainly will but we want to also make sure we're balancing that with other services that we can provide our community and then I have one other question for you and that is the code enforcement officer yes Um, we're in the process of hiring one and I say that because there are times at the Planning Commission where we hear um, that a code enforcement officer um, perhaps could play an important part in our decision making as well. Absolutely, and with the approved budget, uh, the town council gave us the approval to hire a code compliance officer as well as a part-time community service officer. The part-time community service officer would be handling nighttime noise and entertainment concerns, which we understand is of concern to members of our community. They will also be functioning in coordination with our police department, so we will be doing that recruitment together with our uh, police colleagues. We haven't yet started the recruitment for either of those positions, given the backlog of, of work in our HR department but we hope to get to that uh, very quickly. All right, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Commissioner Erickson? I just have a follow-up question from the training session that the town attorney gave us. If I understood correctly, you were going to seek to get some clarity about whether the protocols for the planning commission applied to planning commissioners when they were serving on other bodies. And just a question of have you had an opportunity to get clarification? 
Yes, we've taken this to the policy committee and they provided me direction to bring back revised language that would clarify that issue uh, and other issues at 4.2 that we discussed. So we hope to get that out of policy and, and to the council maybe by the end of summer to clarify those issues uh, for you. Um, and also really looking at your um, per policies and procedures for the Planning Commission. Some of them are very old and outdated, so they started to get into some of the other areas. So I'm going through it right now to try to bring it up to date and to clarify those issues. And so let me ask a follow-up question. So you won't have clarity prior to uh, Thursday, June 12th? In other words, tomorrow. <laughs> That's tomorrow. Well, the reason I ask that is there's a housing element advisory board meeting tomorrow so you won't have that clear I mean I, it's, I assume the, 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 I assume the, the answer to my question the clarity is is that as a planning commission commissioner you have to comply with you for, for for the time being until that's clarified you have to comply with your policy which doesn't allow you to have those ex party communications thank you uh, madam chair if I may uh, one additional item starting this week uh, the staff will be distributing to our applicants a community development application process agreement, uh, copies of which are being distributed to you for your information. As the council uh, was considering the role of the consulting architect, and they'll be continuing that conversation on Monday, uh, June 16th, we recognize that uh, there may be a misunderstanding of the role of the consulting architect, as well as the role of staff recommendation, et cetera. So this uh, sheet really just identifies that um, while we have staff recommendations and input from the consulting architect, that that in no way binds the deciding bodies, that you are still free to make the decisions that you need to make uh, with full discretion and consideration of all the facts and findings and uh, public testimony. So we wanted you to have this for your information. If you have any comments, uh, we're always looking for ideas of how we can do things better. Please uh, direct those comments to myself. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pervetti. Seeing no other questions, we're, that's it. Oh, commission matters. Yes, are there any matters that the commission would like to bring forward? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>